Hi, my name is Aaron Rhodes from Falafel Software. You are watching the Telerik Rad Grid Performance Tutorial. In this session, we're going to take a look at some performance tips on getting the most out of your Rad Grid and some layout options to make it look really nice. During this video, there may be code examples written in either Visual Basic or C Sharp. However, the concepts are the same and code is provided for you in both languages. In this example, we're going to take a look at an existing website that uses a hierarchical rad grid and has some potential performance problems. We're going to discuss why these problems exist and how we can address them. And we're also going to address some layout issues to make this work in a more user-friendly format. Before we go into fixing up the website, let's talk about the three areas where you can see performance problems. The first is the server. If you have lots of server-side code processing lots of data requests and you have lots of users connecting onto that server at the same time, you could see significant performance problems with your web application. The second is the network. If you're pushing lots of data at the same time from the server to the client, it could take a long time to render that web page for the client. And the third is on the client side. Often there's a lot of JavaScript running and waiting for that JavaScript to process on that machine can make it take a long time to render that page as well. To tell where the performance problems are on your web application, there are various tools like Firebug and Fiddler, which I will provide the links for above, that can tell you where you can improve on performance. Let's take a look at how to use one of those tools right now. What I'm going to do is right in front of the colon in my address bar, I'm going to insert a period. And that's going to change the URL in a way that allows Fiddler to view it. Then from Tools, I go ahead and start Fiddler 2. And that's going to be now monitoring my web page. So if I click in here, and reload the web page, Fiddler now sees all of the transactions that have happened. In the statistics we can see how many bytes were sent and received and what an estimated round trip would be depending on speed and distance away. So you can use this to debug the specific operations and you can look inside those operations to see exactly what was sent and received and you can even see a timeline of all of the events together to get a good idea of where your time is being spent on that page load. Let's begin by running our website and talk a little bit about it. Now you'll see it loaded pretty fast here. In this scenario I'm running a local website on a local web server with a local database and it doesn't actually have very many records in the table. So in this case it's running pretty smoothly but the performance hits from the settings in this rad grid could exponentially grow as hundreds of records are added. But there are a few things we can look at right now. The headers of this grid are static headers which can cause some performance problems there's the scrolling client which is showing all of the records no matter how many there are and with the addition of the scrolling frame being a little bit clunky for a user to use it also has no limitation for how slow it can get we also have row select which can add a lot of HTML on the client side which will cause a hit for network performance and scripts that have to run to display that and also when we are clicking on these we notice that the screen flickers because Ajax isn't enabled for this and these are options we see commonly used that decrease performance so let's take a look at our web page and find out how we can make this better I'm in my design view and the first option I'm going to change in my properties view is in client settings scrolling, I'm going to change use static headers to false, which is the default value. And while I'm here, I'm going to turn client scrolling to false as well. 
and that presents a problem. When we run this now, our web page is going to be very long. It's going to display all the records outside of that scroll box that it used to be in. So we're going to have to find out a different way of displaying without taking up all that real estate with the grid all of our records. To solve that, I'm going to use the smart tag and enable paging. That will make it so there's only a specified number of records shown at a time and allows me to page through to see the different pages of records. Now that's not very convenient for a user to use. If they want to find a record in there, they're going to have to page over to the alphabetical area of the records that they want to see. So additionally, I will enable filtering. And that will allow them to at least enter a specific record they're looking for and get to it right away. So that removes those ugly scroll bars. It makes it so we're not taking up the real estate, but you can still get to all the records you need. Another way of solving that problem, instead of using paging, could be like we did in the Rad Grid card view video, where we had a tabbed parameterized query that allowed us to select a alphabetical range of records. I also noticed that the records on this grid were selectable and since we aren't doing anything with that selection and the it's not editable there's no reason to be selecting those records we can turn that client side selection off as well selecting allow row select is now false another trick since we aren't modifying, inserting, or deleting from this table view, in the data sources, we can select these data source modes and set them to data reader. And that will slightly increase performance. There's also an option in our detail tables that I want to talk about. If we go to the master table view and scroll to our details table, collection, click on that ellipsis and scroll through these properties, the hierarchy load mode for this is server bind and we have the option of server bind client or server on demand and in this case server on demand will only select the detail table records when the hierarchy is expanded. Since there is a detail table of this detail table we can do the same here. Okay, okay. The last performance tweak I'm going to make is to add a Ajax manager that we'll then use to enable Ajax. Whenever a change is made in the interface or otherwise to the RAD grid, I'm going to update just the RAD grid instead of the entire page. We'll click OK there. And those are all the performance tweaks I'm going to make to this page. Now let's run this and see how we fared. Okay, well I like the layout. It now fits within the boundaries of my browser without any scroll bars. It allows me to page through all the records or filter them if I'd like. And with the paging, this should scale fairly well with any amount of records that's added to this database. But this isn't all we need to consider. This is only one control, one RAD grid. When you're creating a web application, you have to think of the overall picture. When you have multiple RAD grids and other controls and containers, splitters, all kinds of things could impact the performance of your web page. And you have to think about all the things that you really need or really don't and try and minimize as much of that as you can so that your client is as thin as possible. 
think of things like, am I assigning a CSS class to every cell in the grid? And how many operations is that? When I resize the grid, how does that affect the dimensions of everything around it? How much processing has to go on to render that change? These are all things to consider when you're creating an efficient website. This concludes our tutorial. For more information, follow the links above. And thanks for watching.